here at Rockefeller College, I teach the master's course on global security, which is a core course in the MIA curriculum. It focuses on understanding how militaries operate, when war is more or less likely, why do civil wars break out within countries, and why do terrorists use the violence that they do. I also teach a graduate course on American foreign policy, trying to bring uh, to the classroom lessons that I learned while I was working in the Pentagon, try to understand why the United States behaves the way it does on the international scene. The United States is still the strongest country militarily in the world. It has, spends more money on foreign aid than any other country on the planet. So understanding why the United States behaves the way it does doesn't just help our students when they go work for the U.S. government, but it also helps any student that's interested in working in international politics. Whether we like it or not, for the vast majority of states around the planet, those states are spending money basically on the welfare of their citizens, an insurance policy, if you will, and their militaries. The United States is going to spend about $700 billion this year on its military and spend considerable effort at all levels to focus on problems of global security. So in my course on global security, we look at the full gamut of issues. We try to understand why civil wars occur and why they persist. And then we apply those lessons to contemporary cases like Afghanistan, a war the United States has now been in on for 17 years. We try to examine why states acquire nuclear weapons and what those nuclear weapons do for the politics of that state and for the international system. And always go back to a contemporary problem like what we have with North Korea today. So the core course on global security is looking at persistent, enduring causes of war and peace and also applying those lessons to the challenges the United States and the international community find themselves in. And that can be issues of great power politics, it can be issues of interstate diplomacy, or it can be trying to understand problems of non-state actors, of why terrorism continues to bedevil the international system, and what new technologies like information operations and unmanned aerial vehicles mean for the international system. In my courses, we try to draw on a range of academic accounts that look at theoretical reasons why states may have acted the way they do, declassified documents where we can observe policymakers grappling with difficult decisions, contemporary media accounts that try to provide analysis for ongoing problems where academics haven't had time to focus on it in detail. We go back and forth between academic, journalistic, historical, government accounts because none of them have the answers, but we need students to be able to engage with text from different backgrounds because those are exactly the sorts of texts they're going to need to navigate when they're in the professional workforce. One emphasis of my course is to make sure students can write concise, analytically clear, theoretically informed, memos on whatever topics in international affairs that they are focused on. Leaders in senior positions in government don't have time to read long rambling memos. When I was in government, the longest memo I ever wrote was four pages. So coursework that only emphasizes writing 20 or 30 page research papers is going to prepare our students to do something they're unlikely to ever do if they work in the US government. So instead, we need to make sure students know how to do sustained, theoretically important research, but also can write short, crisp analysis for senior leaders that have limited time to read it. My classes are conducted almost invariably in a seminar style, because the reality is in think tanks and governments, most of the time meetings are going to involve peers sitting at a table and trying to think about some problem together. So rather than just me as a professor lecturing some large group of people that have to pay attention to my words, I want them to know what the students thought about readings or contemporary events. I want them to engage with one another because that's the experience that they're going to have after they leave the classroom here at Albany. Mm -hmm.